In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can control your browser using just AI. We're gonna go through every single step. One, how to install web UI. This is the application that you use in order to control your browser using AI. We're gonna install this locally on your machine very quick and easy. Second, we're gonna go through the steps on how to set up your AI in order to control your browser. And finally, at the end of the video, I've got a little secret, a little trick where you can actually use web UI in order to not just control a browser, like OpenAI's operator, but to actually control your browser, your Google Chrome, your Microsoft Edge, your Firefox browser itself, all your passwords, all your details, and that the AI can use all those details when it is performing its tasks. Little trick, I'm gonna show you that at the end. Stick around, let's get into it. Before we get into it, I wanna take you through a demo of Web UI. We'll go through all the steps of setting this up, but I wanna show you how it works. So I've got it loaded up on my local host over here. This is what the interface looks like. You've got a couple of options here, a couple of settings. So you've got your agent settings where you can use vision so it can see what you're looking at or not. And obviously you can set the number of steps it goes through. And then there's a bunch of steps around which LLM you want to use. So in this case, we're using OpenAI. There's a bunch of others, Anthropic, Google, Alama, DeepSeek. You can go and select those. Well, again, I'll show you how to set up all of those in terms of API keys and, and all of that. And then obviously you can select your model. You can then uh, select your browser settings. So in my case, this is the little trick at the end where you can actually use your own browser. And I'll show you how to set that up. Then you wanna go to, this is the actual meat and the bones. This is the, where you run your agents. So here you can put your task description. Anything you can do in a browser, you can add in here. The example they've got is go to google.com and type OpenAI, click search and give me the first URL. So we will start with that. There's just a couple other options here. You've got deep research, so you can do a research task. Uh, it will show you your results. It actually records your screen and will save those recordings here. So you can kind of go back to those, which is pretty cool. And then finally, there's some config here. If you've got some additional config, you can load that up. But let's go back to run agent and let me show you how this works. So I'm going to basically go with this example prompt. I'm going to hit run agent and then you'll see my browser will open up and we'll go from there. So you can see it opens up my browser uh, and I'm not doing anything, hands up. Let me just bring this across so you can see both and how it's running. So you can see there, it's basically highlighted, highlighted every single component on the Google homepage. It's looking at what it needs to do. So it obviously needs, in our case, should type open AI and then search for it. So it's going through that. You can see it's typed it. Then you'll see it will obviously click the search button. It's identifying where's the Google search button, which is like component 26 and then obviously searches for it, identifies it. So component 17 here would be OpenAI, uh, the main, the first link, because we said, give me the first URL. Alrighty, so in terms of our terminal, I'll just bring that across. You can see uh, task was completed successfully. So we'll go and look at the results over here. So if we come back over here, we hit stop, go to results. You can see first URL is the openai.com URL, and that is on the money right there. So that's your, basically, this is your results page where you'll see the results. It'll also give you any errors if kind of it stopped or, you know, if it errored out, I will give you that information. But it performed our task. It went search for OpenAI and returned the first URL. It didn't open it because we didn't say open it. We said, just give me the first URL. So that's the result we want. Okay, so let's set up web UI locally. What we're gonna do is you're gonna come to browser use forward slash web UI on GitHub. You can just Google search this. There will be a link in the description. Just click on that and it will take you straight through. So on this, this is all the installation information. There's a couple of demos all about web UI. You wanna come down to installation guide. There's two types of installation, local and via Docker. We're not gonna do the Docker one. I like the local one, so we're gonna go ahead with that. I find it's the easiest as well. Step one is to clone your repo. You're not going to just clone it anywhere in your computer. So if you're on Windows or Mac, it's gonna be the same thing. You want to come through to your documents folder and create a folder for web UI. I just called it web UI agent. You can call it whatever you want. So once you've got web UI agent, what you wanna come and do, if we open up a new terminal, is you just wanna to go to the directory of documents and you wanna forward slash web UI agent, which matches that folder. Okay, in here, this is where you'll install your GitHub repo. So here you'll do the git clone piece of code over here. 
and then you'll open up that directory web UI. So you can see I've already done that. So it will create the clone over here and you'll then open that up and in here you'll have all of your cloned GitHub information. What you wanna then do is you wanna come through to step two, you wanna install UV. So just hit that link, go down to UV. Uh, you wanna go down to installation and you'll see the Mac and OS, uh, Mac OS and Linux. You wanna basically copy this piece of code, run that so you can install UV. And then once you've installed UV for managing the Python environment, you actually want to install Python. So in that case, we'll go from there. So basically copy that piece of code in there you'll see it picks up Python 3.11.11, .11, which is the latest version. It's already been installed. Then you wanna come down to activating that virtual environment. So in my case for the Mac OS, I wanna copy this source to code, paste that in, hit enter. Nothing will happen because it's already been activated. You then want to install the requirements. Now these requirements, this .txt file is within your clone GitHub repo. So there's the requirements text file. So all you wanna do is just go ahead and pop that in there. And, oh, we need to be in the web UI folder. One second, okay, so now we're in the web UI folder. We can install that over there. So you'll see it's installing all of those requirement.txt files. Very quick and easy there. You then wanna install Playwright. Very simple, it's a co uh, copy and paste. Again, nothing's gonna happen because it's installed already. And then you wanna come for step four, this is a little bit tricky. So you wanna configure the environment. So you wanna create a copy of the example environment. And in here, you want to basically create a .env, an environmental file where you can install all your API keys, your setup for your browser, all that information. That is going to be stored again in the web UI clone GitHub repo. Now, when I initially did this, I struggled to find the .env file, which you can see is over here. Now you can see some of these are grayed out. This is because when um, Mac hides any files that have a leading dot in its name. So what I found is if you click shift, command, and then dot, it either hides them or shows them, hides them or shows them, right? So you want to show them. So if you sit in here and you're like, I can't see the .env file at all. You wanna hit shift, command, and dot. Boom, it will come up. Then you wanna open up your .env file. I'm not gonna open it up because it's full of all my API keys and I don't wanna go reset all of them. But in this case, if we scroll down over here, there's an example of what an env file will look like. So this is what your env file will contain. So it will basically allow you to add your OpenAI key, your Anthropic key, your Google API key, you can add DeepSeek here. It's very simple, you just say DeepSeek underscore API underscore key and then pop in your API key. There's some browser settings, so you wanna set up all of those. And then there's some VNC settings, which I don't even really know what that really is. I think it's just to have a password to log into the actual local instance to use web UI. So open up .env, edit all that information, add in your API keys, because you will need them in order to use web UI. So you'll just do that. Alrighty, then once that's done, so once you've configured the environmental file or the environment file, let's go over here then you basically will jump over the dock installation because we're not doing all of that. And we're gonna come to usage. So now what you wanna do is you want to basically run the web UI, it's gonna run locally. So it's gonna run within your local uh, browser. It should be in this URL address, but it will give you the URL once you've actually run it. So copy this over here, and then let's go back to our terminal. So come back to our terminal, we pop that in, and we run it, give it a little bit of a second and you'll see it is running. We will also bring up our Safari environment over here, or Safari browser. And if we keep loading this, you'll see nothing's happening. But as this starts setting up, then this will become active. So just give it a second. So set ego true, set share equal true in launch. It's just setting up. Now it says here, running on local URL over here. So this should be the right URL, but basically what you want to do is you just want to copy that URL into here. Boom, enter. It's up and running, good to go. Alrighty, so if you struggle with any of these, just drop a comment. I'm pretty good on reply, like responding to those comments, so, and I'll, I'll try and be as quick as possible. 
drop a comment if you're struggling and I'll try and figure it out for you. But um, yeah, it's pretty straightforward and we now can get into the awesome part which is actually using this. Okay, so we're in web UI browse use and the reason I've got it in Safari is because I wanna show you how you can use your own browser. And for me, I use Google Chrome. I never really use Safari, so got it up in, in Safari. I will show you that at the end of this video, how to use your own browser, but let's go through how this works. So what you wanna do is you wanna come down to LLM configuration. In my case, I've got OpenAI and I've got Google API keys loaded, so we can use either one. I'm gonna go with OpenAI, GPT 4.0, just found that that works best. You can also see here there's an API key that you can basically enter in your API key every single time you use this if you want to, right? So leave blank if you use the .env. So once we've set up our env, it's a set and forget, and you can just use that. But if you want to use your API key every single time, happy to do that. You can skip out the .env and you can literally just use it without doing that step. So that's I think is good to mention. Alrighty, then we're gonna to come to use your own browser. So for me, I'm going to have that off for now and we're going to go run agent. And in this case, we're going to say, go to google.com and search for eBay, open the first URL and search for Pokemon trading cards. Let's be more specific for Squirtle, not Squirrel, Squirtle Pokemon trading card. Let's do that. I hope I spelled Squirtle right. Okay, so go Google, search for eBay, open the eBay URL and search for Squirtle Pokemon trading card. Let's see how that goes. So if we say run agent, it's now gonna be running. I wanna bring this across. Let's just bring that down. So it's opened up a browser. So you can see here, I'm not signed into to Gmail. We're not using our, our own browser. We're using anything. It's search for eBay and obviously it's picking up all the different components. We can have our uh, thing running there. So it's opened up eBay for us. My hands are up here, I'm not doing nothing. It's highlighting all these different items and identifying where it needs to go and what it needs to do. Hopefully it's gonna search for Squirtle uh, Pokemon trading card. There you go, it says Squirtle Pokemon trading card and hopefully it knows to click search. And there you go, it searched for Squirtle Pokemon trading card. Undo a thing. It's all AI, just based off of that one little prompt. Takes hold of a browser and searches for it. Pretty cool. So we're gonna come back here and I'm actually gonna stop that. So it ran for 122 seconds. So that's about two minutes to do that. Obviously this is gonna get quicker and quicker, but it's fairly okay. So let's stop that. Let's see our browser disappears because it's basically like, a, like when you use OpenAI operator, if you've seen any of the videos, it brings up a browser and it will perform those tasks. So that being said, that shows us how we can set that up and how we can go about performing tasks. So once you've set up web UI locally, you can then go ahead, give it some tasks, choose your LLM you wanna use and go ahead and use it. A thing to note here is Google, OpenAI, depends on the model, has vision capabilities. You want that. So there are a couple others that don't have that, don't have vision, so it's not gonna be able to see anything. So just keep that in mind. But you know, if you're using OpenAI and Google, that's pretty much all you need. Alrighty, so you wanna know how you can not just run web UI in any browser, but in your own specific browser. It's really, really simple. Let me show you how. Okay, so we've got web UI up and running on our local host, and we wanna basically go to Google, search for eBay, open eBay, and search for a Squirtle Pokemon trading card. If we come to browser settings, there's this little button over here that says, use your own browser. I wish it was that easy, but we have to do a little bit of config. The config comes down to our .env file that sits on the, that sits within our web UI cloned GitHub repo, right? It's this .env file over here. Okay, so you're gonna open up that .env file. I've scrolled down a bit just so no one sees my API keys, but above this, you'll have all your API keys that you can go and set. In here, you'll also have a couple of other settings. So you, specifically, you'll have Chrome settings. So all of this information over here, don't worry about it. There's two things you're gonna do. One, the Chrome persistent session will be equal to false initially. You're gonna change that to true. And then you're gonna come and paste in these two lines. Where can you get these two lines? If you go 
to the web UI GitHub page. I'll bring that up now. So in the web UI GitHub page, and there'll be a link to this in the description, you just scroll all the way down, or kind of, and you'll hit this. This is what you wanna copy. So Chrome path, Chrome user data. You know, copy those two across to your .env file. All right, so we've got a .env. Let's just bring that up over there. And then only thing you're gonna change is you want to add, so if we bring that up, let's bring it up a little bit more, is currently default, it says your username. Whatever your name is on your computer, mine is Jagger Belagada, it's my name and surname, you're gonna just change it to that in that one line. Line above, leave it as is. So it knows it's Mac OS, Google Chrome, and then it's just me as the user, paste it in that. So, and then you go ahead and just save your .env. So two steps, one, change the Chrome persistent session to true from false. And second of all, copy the send, which you can get from the link in the description, change your, change the, your user name to your actual username and save. We've saved that. Now let's come back to our Safari. One last step that you need to do, which is quite important is keep Google Chrome completely closed, right? So in this case, you can still see I've got it kind of up and running because I was showing you the, the, the GitHub page. We're gonna quit out of that. So it's closed, right? We need it to be closed. So we've got Safari up and running, right? And it's saying use your own browser. And we've got go to Google, search for eBay, open eBay, search for Squirtle Pokemon trading card. If we hit run agent, this is gonna open up my browser. Logged into Google already, logged into, might be logged into eBay, I'm not too sure, but it's your current browser that you normally use. So let's hit run agent. Alrighty, so we're gonna go and we're gonna say run agent. Okay, so it opens up my Google Chrome. You can see I'm logged in in the top corner here. This is my actual browser. Let's see if it executes. So it's going to Google. Again, hands up, not doing anything. It's picking up all the different elements and components, identifying what it needs to do. At this point, it should search for eBay and then go to the eBay URL, which it is doing, which is pretty cool. It's loaded up eBay. It's now highlighting all the components over there. It should click on to uh, 17, which is the first URL, which is the eBay one. It's in eBay over here. You can see it popped up with my login details. It's obviously not gonna log in because I'm gonna tell it to. It's now should search for a Squirtle Pokemon card. And there you go. We've got Squirtle Pokemon card up and running. I didn't do a thing. AI did all of it within my browser, which is epic. If you guys found this useful, please do like and subscribe. Over 95% of the people that watch this channel are not subscribed. So do me a favor, like and subscribe if you're getting some benefit out of this, if it helped you in any way. And I will promise you, I will continue making better and better videos and providing better and better content to you. So thank you guys. I will see you on the next one. Cheers.